good afternoon all i welcome all of uh, all the participants on behalf of icsi to this webinar on msmes role of company secretaries before we formally uh, go ahead in introducing the theme of today's webinar and the faculties i would request uh, chairman pcs committee icsi cs sandeep kejriwal ji to address the gathering thanks pawan ji ccs bajaj ji our past central council member garg ji both the learned speaker of uh, today webinar pawan ji and pawan ji and uh, ashish ji my colleague in the council my dear friends good afternoon to all of you and i welcome mm -hmm. all of you to this webinar friends i am also thankful for president icsi for this webinar there are a great opportunities in msme for the practicing commerce secretary especially for the practicing commerce secretary especially for the pcs who is beyond metro cities we practicing commerce secretary can help the msme in uh, availing their subsidies their tax planning their organizational structure their taxation their accounts and all a huge opportunity for practicing commerce secretary in the area of msme and i hope that both the speaker will touch upon it and uh, i also hope that all the my friends who have attended this webinar will be greatly benefited with the words of wisdom of both the speakers thank you over to you paul thank you thank you sandeep ji Uh, friends, uh, MSME, uh, we at ICSI felt that the role of company secretaries in MSME sector is uh, has really, really travelled a lot. And looking at the scope and uh, opportunities for uh, company secretaries in this uh, MSME field, we have uh, hold this uh, webinar for the benefit of all the uh, professionals. Friends, MSME, micro, small, and medium enterprises are considered as the pillars of Indian economy. due to their considerable contribution to gdp and also exports recently a report by a consultancy firm kpmg and industry body of the uh, confederation of indian industries has reported that the entities accounts for nearly 30% of indian uh, uh, gdp and 45% of its exports it is huge the msmes have uh, immensely contributed to the expansion of entrepreneurial endeavors through business innovations the msmes are widening their domain across sectors in the economy producing diverse range of products and services to meet demands of domestic as well as global markets the msmes in particular are playing a crucial role by providing large employment opportunities at comparatively lower capital cost than the large industries as well as if you observe the industrialization of rural and backward areas has been achieved through uh, msme sector uh, they are they are reducing the regional imbalances assuring more equitable uh, distribution of national income and wealth this msme sector has grown rapidly with government support we have seen in 2020 uh, indian government has started with uh, make in india made in india and uh, various other uh, initiatives that atmanirbhar bharat and all and msme sector has played its role uh, for the government and numerous relaxation has been provided along with privileges like easy sanction of bank loans lower rates of interest tax exemptions recognitions and many more msme has uh, proven to be a golden opportunity for uh, young, especially the young professionals company secretary in my opinion can nurture msmes by playing a role of one stop uh, professional services in the areas of compliance checkups taxation fund raising advisory services and many more and today we have two eminent speakers to uh, take us through this concept of msme and the opportunities and we have with us cs rajiv bajaj ji and cs dr uh, ajay garg ji to share their valuable view points on this subject i take this opportunity uh, to introduce the uh, faculties for uh, today's webinar cs rajiv bajaj ji is a ceo of bajaj and bajaj corporate chambers previously he was senior associate director 
फिनांस एंड कंपनी सेक्रेटरी बिसाइड होल्डिंग चार्ज ऑफ हेड इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी ह्यूमन रिसोर्स एंड जनरल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ पैनासोनिक एवीसी नेटवर्क इंडिया कंपनी लिमिटेड विच इज अब्सिडरी ऑफ पैनासोनिक कॉर्पोरेशन जापान He is fellow member of ICSI and was also uh, uh, esteemed member of the Central Council of ICSI from 2015 to 2018. His major focus areas are startup ecosystems, corporate laws, corporate governance, leadership, and change management. He will be sharing his views on the MSME ecosystem in India, global scenario, and government schemes to support MSME in India. We welcome you, uh, Raju sir. Uh, thank you thank you another uh, uh, esteemed faculty for today's uh, webinar is cs dr ajay garg ji dr ajay garg ji is a diversified professional effective speaker technical author writer and social entrepreneur with total corporate experience of 38 years he is mentor at startup india portal and 62 startups are under his mentorship He is fellow member of ICSI and ICA, Indian Council of Arbitration, IBBI registered valuer, registered IPR uh, attorney, qualified insolvency professional, qualified independent director, qualified social auditor, labor law compliance mentor, and uh, directorate in commerce. He regularly writes articles on corporate matters and has delivered numerous lectures in professional and management institutes and engineering colleges. He has served as director on the board of Corporation Bank uh, from 2008 to 2011. His initiatives uh, uh, he uh, initiate uh, myvaluationbank.com is a runway success for more than five lakh ten thousand hits in less than three years. He will share with us uh, professional opportunities for PCS in MSME space. We welcome both our faculties, and now I invite. Uh, Yes, Raju Bajaj ji, for uh, uh, sharing his views on the uh, uh, on the areas which uh, is MSME ecosystem in India, global scenario and government schemes to support MSMEs in India. Over to you, Raju sir. Thank you so much, uh, Pavan ji, and uh, uh, thank you uh, to ICSI team for uh, inviting me to speak on a very important uh, uh, subject of uh, MSMEs. and uh, uh, as you know that uh, uh, startup ecosystem as well as msme uh, ecosystem is uh, something uh, which everybody is talking about and uh, i think uh, as a professionals we have a huge huge opportunity in this area uh, to uh, share our uh, uh, thoughts on this and uh, to look at uh, what are the opportunities for we professionals uh, to uh, grow in this space and uh, so i'll be uh, between me and ajay ji we decided that uh, i'll be speaking more on the msme opportunities part and uh, how the ecosystem is how is the global scenario and uh, what are the government schemes uh, and i'll be Uh, speaking less on the opportunities for professionals but uh, uh, ajay ji will be focusing more on the opportunity part uh, so that uh, there is no overlap between us and uh, we make uh, uh, this webinar very useful for our members who are attending so um, first we will be uh, as i said talking about the msme ecosystem uh, then economic opportunities a global scenario and of course the government schemes we all understand what is msme msme stands for micro small and medium enterprises uh, it is uh, a term which is used to refer uh, small sized businesses and uh, as uh, uh, just now pavan ji also mentioned that uh, uh, these businesses play a very very important role in our economy and uh, um, basically uh, especially in the uh, the uh, class cities and uh, the smaller cities the opportunity for msme growth is immense and i think the indian economy uh, will uh, improve a lot uh, the government wants uh, right now as uh, it was mentioned it is 30% of the contributing 30% of the gdp but uh, the aim of the government is to take it to 50% and uh, 
So continuous efforts are being done by government of India to uh, uh, get into uh, this MSME space more and more, uh, help MSME sector grow, show them what are the main uh, benefits and opportunities which are being offered to them and uh, work on the ecosystem so that uh, the teething troubles and the problems which uh, uh, these uh, MSMEs are facing, they will be taken care. And we as company secretaries, I think we should uh, uh, work hand in hand with government of India because we as professionals are extended arm of the government to uh, help in this ecosystem. And uh, actually, uh, we should uh, drive uh, our uh, energy to support this uh, sector. And uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, so there was a change in the definition of MSME uh, in 2020. We all know uh, that earlier it was a manufacturing and service. Uh, uh, there were two definition, different investment criteria were there. So uh, earlier it was in manufacturing and service sector, uh, micro was 25 lakhs and service was 10 lakhs. Uh, the small enterprises were to 5 to 2 CR and medium were 10 CR to 5 CR. Uh, but now uh, the investment and turnover uh, criteria has been added. In case of a micro uh, investment criteria is 1 CR, small is 10 CR and medium is 50 CR. And uh, in case of uh, the turnover, uh, it is uh, uh, basically, uh, you know, we have uh, uh, again a change of definition, which is uh, uh, government has uh, made it uh, uh, 5 CR, 10, uh, 50 CR, 10 CR, 50 CR, and 250 CR. So um, the whole idea is uh, that uh, no uh, incremental uh, tax uh, you know, uh, should be there. And of course, uh, uh, the benefits which are there for MSME sector, they should be uh, passed on. And of course, the economies of scale, uh, which is uh, very, very important uh, for the MSME sector. And uh, uh, of course, job creation is one of the motto of uh, uh, government that they want to uh, create uh, uh, the jobs for uh, uh, the uh, MSME uh, sector. And uh, of course, um, they also uh, are working for productivity uh, so that uh, there's uh, overall enhancement in the productivity for MSME sector. Now, uh, in 2020, if we look at the numbers were very, very uh, less. If uh, you may ask me, 54 lakh micro enterprises were there which contributed 94% of the total MSME numbers we were having. Small enterprises were 2.93, uh, which was roughly 5%, and medium enterprises was just 32 lakh, uh, uh, 32,000, sorry, uh, which is just 1% of uh, what the to total space looked like. But we have recently seen a lot of surge in the MSME registrations. Uh, the government of India is uh, uh, pushing this uh, very much and uh, uh, by uh, talking about the various benefits which uh, um, are there for the MSME sector, uh, the, uh, you know, overall, if you look at micro, small and medium businesses sector comprised of almost six crore businesses. Now, this is pretty huge. Uh, if you ask me uh, the numbers. Uh, maybe more, uh, but this is just uh, uh, estimation. Uh, and uh, because there are so many MSMEs who are still not registered. So the registration of MSME is the most important uh, uh, target uh, which is being taken by government of India because still there are many businesses, they are actually not coming forward to uh, register themselves uh, uh, as uh, MSMEs. Now, um, as I mentioned, in 2025, uh, uh, we have a target of 50% uh, contribution. And uh, of course, uh, firms producing goods and services contribute roughly 30%. And uh, the employment potential uh, these uh, MSMEs are creating is almost 11.10 uh, crore, which is huge and humongous. 
So uh, I think uh, the most of the economic issues which we are facing uh, as on date uh, uh, unemployment and uh, uh, the uh, through the S SME sector as well as uh, startups, uh, this can be taken care. Of. And this is uh, uh, this data I have taken today only from the Udyam uh, portal of uh, MSME uh, registration. And uh, it it mentioned uh, uh, you know total registrations are one crore seventy three lakhs twenty nine thousand eight forty two. Uh, this includes the uh, Udyam assisted uh, platform registrations. And uh, out of this, micro enterprises are one crore sixty seven lakhs, and small enterprises are four lakh sixty three thousand, and medium enterprises are forty thousand. So you can see from 22 to uh, till date, uh, there is a huge jump in the uh, uh, overall uh, MSME uh, space, registered uh, MSMEs. And uh, uh, also em employment generation figures are close to 11 lakh, uh, 11 crores, 39 lakhs or 94,000, something like that. Now, uh, if you look at these numbers, these numbers itself are so impressive that uh, we um, have uh, so much of potential. And I think if uh, we all of us focus on uh, supporting MSMEs, these registrations as well as the numbers uh, will grow and uh, we will definitely have a huge uh, uh, value enhancement in this space. Now, if you look at the Indian economy, now we are already on the uh, fast track. We want to be world third largest economy by 2027. Uh, we'll be surpassing Japan and Germany and have third largest stock market by 2030. Uh, thanks to the global trends and uh, uh, of course uh, uh, the countries, uh, uh, we have made a lot of investment in technology and energy sector also. And uh, uh, Indian GDP would be more than double from uh, current 3.5 trillion to uh, uh, it will be 7.5 trillion by 2031. And of course, uh, our share of global exports uh, will also double over that period. While the Bombay Stock Exchange would deliver 11% annual growth, reaching a market capitalization of 10 trillion uh, in the coming decade. So these numbers itself are. Uh, so uh, impressive and uh, uh, there's a lot of hope uh, for uh, India uh, in Indian economy and uh, the world is watching us. Now, if the world is watching us, that means we are uh, here to, uh, you know, uh, uh, here at the cusp of uh, a very big growth uh, uh, which is going to happen in these years. And once the growth happens, professionals also grow along with that. These are the World Bank numbers. Uh, if uh, on the left hand side, if you look at uh, our real GDP growth, has uh, uh, really uh, it was in 21 22, it was 8.7, and uh, 22 23, uh, it of course uh, the whole world was going through a recessionary trend but still we maintained 6.9. I think we were the number one uh, country of the world uh, having this kind of uh, GDP growth. And in 23, 24 also, the World Bank uh, expect, expects us to grow by 6.6%, uh, which is a great number. And uh, if you, if you uh, look at uh, the overall uh, uh, you know, fiscal deficit and inflation scenario also, we are we are very much under control. Uh, the recessionary trends which are there all across the world, uh, we we are uh, still uh, you know in, we are uh, insulated from that. And uh, if you look at the foreign exchange reserves, also uh, we have a phenomenal uh, U.S. Uh, dollar five hundred sixty three billion uh, kind of a foreign exchange reserves, which are uh, something uh, to uh, be proud of and uh, uh, but still uh, i think there are a lot of sectors where uh, uh, a lot of action is required we need to uh, uh, work on the export potential and that is where the msme uh, growth uh, should uh, come in 
and that is where i think we should all work uh, together with the government to take uh, the export uh, figures to a higher level so that the fiscal deficit uh, is uh, reduced and we uh, grow uh, year on year basis uh, but uh, if you look at the uh, 6.8 uh, uh, is a very very impressive number and uh, services sector agriculture and allied activities and industrial growth all are contributing uh, to uh, this uh, growth story of india and uh, as you know the government has a vision uh, 2047 uh, and uh, they they have uh, uh, you know uh, very much focus on uh, attaining higher pros uh, prosperity making the best facilities available to rural and urban areas getting rid of unnecessarily uh, government uh, interferences and of course uh, promoting urbanization in india so um, even asian development bank uh, uh, they have a, a expectation that uh, we will grow by 8% uh, on in gdp so that uh, again is a very positive one and uh, of course uh, there are various sectors which uh, uh, are uh, going to give excellent returns to the investors one of course is healthcare and insurance renewable energy it real estate fmcg and automobile sector so uh, i think uh, we as professionals uh, we should uh, uh, stay very focused on uh, Uh, how we can participate how we can actually propel growth uh, for uh, the uh, uh, indian uh, economy and uh, that is where i think uh, all of us uh, should focus on and uh, financial inclusion is a must for msmes uh, and uh, it is very important that uh, uh, you know we we do lot of uh, activities on uh, Uh, making sure that the msme sector uh, get uh, financial support from the financial ecosystem uh, and of course uh, banks and NB nbfcs they are uh, uh, supporting uh, uh, msme uh, companies and uh, of course there are a lot of fintech companies also uh, who have a lot of innovative digital financing solution for msmes uh, of course uh, um, uh, there is a Uh, you know innovative uh, digital lending also going on and uh, uh, of course we have to push uh, credit underwriting uh, and uh, of course uh, work on uh, the mapping of credit worthiness of uh, msmes uh, because uh, uh, you know when you go to bank uh, they always used to ask for collateral but now government of india has come out with a scheme uh, where uh up to 2 cr uh, collateral free loans are also being offered to msmes and uh, uh, their uh, so uh, their payment history economic behavior uh, uh, you know how they are going to be uh, working in this uh, overall uh, uh, arena and a uh, lot of uh, uh, things are happening on technology front so the technology driven fintech companies uh, uh of course uh, they will play a very important role in uh, helping msmes uh, get their finances and uh, mm, there is uh, another uh, very big talk going on on how, why msme uh, should go digital uh, because uh, digital is the way uh, i support a lot of uh, uh, startups and one of the uh, startup i support is into the healthcare uh, you know uh, ecosystem so the uh, when i was you know i am involved in their day to day management and uh, i i could realize that uh, uh, the kind of uh, support they are getting from the digital uh, online sales and online uh, uh, you know um, ecosystem uh, is humongous so uh, so msmes need to go digital Uh, and of course uh, they need to increase their overall operational efficiency uh, for providing better customer service using digital platforms and uh, of course uh, uh, these days uh, customers are also very choosy so you need to enhance your overall customer experience 
and of course uh, uh, help msmes so face competition from other players and to expand uh, uh, their customer reach uh, to the new geographies basically uh, you know the digitalization helps you uh, move across geographies that's the best part of digitalization because uh, uh, you need to uh, actually uh, you can immediately increase your reach and if your product is really good you can you can even uh, go across the globe uh, and sell your products so uh, uh, people are moving more and more uh, towards uh, digitization and uh, uh, of course uh, they are giving uh, focused uh, uh, skill development training to uh, micro entrepreneurs in both urban and rural areas uh, and of course uh, best quality products uh, are being uh, uh, you know produced by all these uh, uh, msmes and uh, of course government is helping them in identifying the market opportunities and uh, also uh, the risk management part of it is very very important that is where we professionals can guide uh, these uh, msmes on how they can foresee the future and uh, adopt to the tech enabled uh, strategies so uh, if you look at uh, the important factors which are helping uh, msme growth one uh, promoting startups uh, according to nascam uh, nascom uh, report um, there are around 106 unicorns uh, till date and of course uh, uh, market capitalization uh, uh, of uh, you know 18 billion for byju's is uh, something uh, uh, you know uh, although byju's was uh, in uh, uh, news recently for certain uh, uh, other uh, uh, you know uh, corporate governance issues but uh, i think uh, uh, still they are maintaining their position and uh, there are uh, other decacons like paytm flipkart uh, you know who are actually uh, uh, expanding uh, in a in a very big way in the domestic market and uh, they are missing uh, funding opportunities uh, uh, they are evolving technologies uh, in I work very uh, closely with a lot of startups, and uh, Ajay Ji also uh, uh, is mentor to many of them. Uh, but uh, one thing we realize when we are talking and when we are working with these uh, start startup entrepreneurs that uh, uh, most of them are techies, no? Because uh, technology startups are uh, um, in vogue, and uh, they are being. Uh, uh, you know, nurtured by a uh, lot of investor community as well, but uh, they lack that uh, uh, you know uh, focus on the commercial aspects of it. They lack focus on the compliance aspects of it. They lack focus sometimes on the uh, how to get the financing uh, and the financial part of it. So that is where I think all of us uh, we we have our forte. We have our uh, uh, you know, mainstay, uh, so to say. So we can actually uh, bring in a lot of value uh, to uh, these uh, startups and uh, we can actually bring in a lot of uh, experience to them. We can help them uh, managing their boards properly. We can help them even recruit uh, best of the talent for them. We can also help them get the funding. We can help them present themselves properly to the uh, investor community and uh, we can even actually help them to uh, you know present themselves perfectly uh, before the uh, uh, investors and uh, uh, the people who are interested in their start startups because uh, startup uh, you know uh, funding uh, is more of a storytelling you because you don't have uh, uh, the numbers to uh, show uh, and the initial stage when you are asking for the seed capital or angel capital, you are basically uh, only having your uh, proof of concept or you are just having your uh, you know pitch deck to talk about. But when you actually go to uh, the market, uh, you you approach these people, uh, you uh, are actually uh, you know you start getting uh, uh, confident. And uh, that is where I think uh, 
uh, we professionals can come in and uh, help uh, all these startup entrepreneurs in promoting uh, uh, their uh, startups. And that is where the MSME growth potential will lie. And uh, of course, uh, uh, leveraging of PLI schemes, uh, government has introduced productivity linked incentive schemes with an outlay of 1.97 lakh crores. Uh, and uh, this will definitely boost many industries. Uh, of course, Make in India, uh, enhancing uh, uh, our manufacturing power. Uh, and there are a lot of opportunity because many um, companies I know, because I was work working with Japanese uh, companies for almost 20 odd years. Uh, so I, I know that there are many companies uh, who are shifting their base from China. So that's a huge opportunity for us because all those companies uh, we can, we can uh, through our uh, own uh, MSME ecosystem, try and bring them to uh, India or we can become a manufacturing hub for them. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, government has announced uh, schemes for automotive industry, uh, manufacturing of electric vehicles, uh, will be incentivized because it is going to reduce the carbon footprint and uh, of course uh, reduce the import of fuel uh, because uh, that's also very very important from uh, uh, the Indian standpoint because uh, our uh, uh, fuel bill is very high and that is where the balance of uh, payment uh, uh, problem comes to our country. So um, ease of doing business uh, of course uh, MSME uh, uh, you know, uh, should have a better access to efficient factors of uh, production uh, through industry-friendly uh, labor reforms, uh, proper land acquisition policy, free access to capital, uh, vibrant entrepreneurship culture, modern technology, enabling infrastructure, and uh, simplified tax policy. I think all these factors are going to fuel the growth uh, in MSME sector. And uh, of course, export of services, uh, as I mentioned, uh, to provide clean, green, and lean corporate uh, regime uh, for uh, uh, you know planet, people, and profit. Uh, this is uh, India being uh, uh, now uh, uh, you know conducting a lot of programs of G20 also being a G20 presidentship uh, we have. Uh, so uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, chance to showcase our power. Uh, uh, to uh, show uh, our advantages in the service sector. And uh, of course, uh, we can be a good uh, backup uh, to the entire world uh, because uh, uh, we, we have a power of young population because uh, uh, the world population is aging, uh, but we are uh, having a lot of young people uh, who can work uh, around the clock also. And uh, of course, hardworking people. And uh, so uh, there is a, a balanced growth in agriculture, manufacturing, and service sector, uh, which will definitely uh, reap dividends for us. Now, uh, let's touch upon what are the various, uh, uh, you know, government schemes. Uh, uh, there is a uh, CG credit guarantee fund scheme, you know, CGTMSE, uh, where uh, government has come up with a lot of uh, initiatives where uh, for MSME sector, if they are looking uh, for funds, uh, collateral free loans, uh, government has come forward and it is giving up to uh, two CR of uh, credit guarantee on behalf of MSMEs. And uh, so it is easy uh, assess for funds. And uh, once they get funds, they become big. And then of course they can, uh, you know, be supported by more by the uh, financial ecosystem. And there is a, um, a Prime Minister Employment Generation Program, uh, which is also uh, going the great guns uh, uh, and MSME sector growth will uh, propel further uh, employment opportunities. Uh, there is a Dhyog Aadhaar Memorandum, UAM uh, scheme, and then Make in India and Digital India scheme. So um, I was at a net health uh, uh, event uh, very recently. The way government is digitizing uh, all the uh, uh, you know 
data, uh, for example, uh, the patient data, the hospital data, the health data, uh, the, uh, it's, it's going to be a different world, uh, uh, you know, uh, for us uh, uh, when we see us uh, maybe five, six years down the line, because all these uh, databases which government is working on and building, I'm sure they will uh, be become very handy. Uh, our uh, Aadhaar uh, is already very unique uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, support uh, for, uh, you know, uh, controlling uh, all the details of uh, the people of India. And uh, similarly, uh, there are different uh, digitization programs uh, being uh, uh, conducted by various ministries of government of India, be it a health ministry, be it agriculture ministry and things like that. And, uh, and ministry of MSME also is very, very aggressive in, uh, um, you know, uh, their focus is on registration of MSMEs and uh, uh, Startup India uh, has also got an excellent portal. Uh, you you already see that uh, uh, almost 9,000 plus uh, startups are there in India now. So uh, all these uh, government uh, initiatives are helping uh, uh, the ecosystem. Uh, and of course, uh, the financial assistance, uh, uh, you know, from various sources of finance, uh, uh, and uh, of course, uh, the uh, uh, credit-linked capital subsidy scheme is also there uh, to assist uh, for technology upgradation of uh, these uh, uh, MSMEs. Uh, of course, there's a lot of uh, focus on uh, you know uh, to, uh, adoption of technology by government of India. So uh, uh, you know uh, there is a uh, upgradation uh, of and quality certification TUF scheme and national small industry uh, uh, corporation promote technology infusion uh, to provide technical support to MSMEs. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, as I said, uh, market assist and export promotion is uh, again a very big focus area for the government. And uh, uh, there are a lot of export promotion schemes uh, and market assistance uh, initiatives and market uh, development assistance is also being given to MSMEs. And uh, they are being, uh, uh, their participation in trade fairs, exhibitions, and buyer seller meets uh, is being subsidized. They are being supported uh, to go and present themselves uh, to the various, uh, uh, you know, uh, forums to talk about uh, what they have to offer to the world. And uh, I think this is helping them a lot. Uh, of course, skill development and training uh, is very crucial. Uh, and government has taken a lot of uh, initiatives in that. Skill India mission uh, is promoting the skill training and entrepreneurship uh, development among uh, MSMEs. Uh, so uh, uh, all this brings to the uh, fact a very important aspect that we must uh, encourage uh, people to register MSMEs because, uh, uh, as I mentioned in this uh, beginning of my presentation, there are more than six crores or maybe more uh, than that uh, uh, MSMEs uh, operating or businesses operating in India, but uh, uh, not all of them are registered so far. Uh, so that is where I think uh, uh, our institute, uh, all of us, we have a big role to play. Uh, so we must make people understand the power of uh, uh, the MSME ecosystem and the benefits which uh, uh, people can get by registering on MSME uh, portal. And uh, of course, uh, uh, the various efforts being made by the uh, Indian government. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, they have, uh, uh, government has, uh, you know, uh, provided Jandhan accounts, uh, provident fund insurance, uh, of course, uh, 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 access to market through government e-marketplace. Uh, of course, uh, uh, there are 100 technology centers uh, uh, to be established for technology upgradation. And of course, uh, loans, uh, uh, you know, which are up to one CR is uh, available at drop of the hat. 
so uh, these uh, you know initiatives and then of course uh, uh, ease of doing business uh, uh, you know uh, is something which uh, actually is going to help uh, uh, the msme sector uh, so uh, let's look at now quickly uh, uh, the economic opportunities uh, of course uh, manufacturing and value addition uh, uh, of course uh, export and international trade uh, which is uh, there for expanding the um, so there are various financial incentives also being provided uh, and uh, in particularly in textile handicraft gems and jewelry a uh, lot of sectors and uh, uh, of course digital transformation and e-commerce government is setting up its own portal uh, for e-commerce i think that's going to change the game uh, uh, and uh, already a lot of uh, expectation is there uh, agree business uh, in the uh, last budget also the finance minister announced that uh, uh, agree and food processing is going to be the main focus area where a uh, lot of uh, uh, organic farming and supply chain management uh, uh, you know activities are being funded uh, cold storage and uh, uh, others a lot of incentives are there ministry of agriculture is also very aggressive in this area and of course renewable energy and clean tech sector uh, where a uh, lot of uh, uh, you know uh, power plants uh, turbines uh, energy projects energy efficient technologies uh, they all require the msme participation uh, of course uh, uh, in the it sector and we have uh, uh, services and software development digital marketing business consulting financial services healthcare services tourism hospitality all these are big areas where uh, uh, msmes can grow and thrive and of course uh, uh, training itself is a very big area uh, there are a lot of msmes who are working in this training sector um, so they are providing vocational training and skill development uh, services to the other msmes also and the government procurement and defense manufacturing again uh, this is a huge sector where uh, uh, the uh, uh, supply of goods and uh, services uh, to government agencies uh, is uh, being uh, uh, looked upon and uh, i think uh, uh, there are certain uh, procurements which uh, uh, they have made it uh, only for startups they have reserved that uh, these government procurements will happen only from startups or msme sector so that's a uh, government's way of giving boost to uh, uh, the local msme uh, and uh, of course they are uh, focusing on uh, uh, indigenization of uh, and self reliance in defense sector also uh, we have recently seen a uh, lot of uh, action in this drones particularly uh, india has uh, Uh, produced their own uh, homemade drones and uh, there was a order which was supposed to be given to a foreign national uh, foreign country but uh, uh, that uh, money was uh, kind of foreign exchange was saved by uh, you know uh, our own uh, uh, you know defense sector being uh, supported in this and uh, uh, i was recently uh, looking at even uh, in the uh, Uh, the space uh, sector uh, there are two startups which have come so uh, the privatization of space uh, technology is also happening and the uh, uh, two guys who are ex isro they have formed a startup and now they are going to uh, privatize and privately uh, you know launch satellites uh, so that's the kind of power we are talking about and that is the kind of uh, scenario which is emerging uh if you look at the global uh, economic scenario of course uh, smes are contributing a lot um, uh, msme accounts for 90% of the businesses and uh, uh, of course employment wise also almost 60 to 70% uh, they play a crucial role uh, in uh, many economies including china brazil south africa so uh, we are we are uh, uh, you know at the cusp of uh, uh, you know growth uh, as uh, you know i i shared with you the india story so uh, i think uh, there is a huge opportunity on global value chains 
uh, export we have already talked about challenges and support of course uh, you know is always uh, uh, there but uh, the uh, through digital uh, initiatives msmes uh, can uh, expand uh, of course they need to collaborate and network uh, with the uh, industries globally and uh, of course uh, make uh, joint products uh, joint projects and uh, uh, create uh, uh, you know their own space of course uh, uh, digitalization and entrepreneurship development uh, is being supported and of course uh, uh, there is a huge uh, uh, you know effort being done on sustainability and inclusion and of course uh, resilience and recovery after the pandemic uh, uh, we have seen how india handled the uh, uh, crisis and how we came out very strong uh, uh, out of this now the roadmap is very clear i think uh, we all need to uh, work uh, on uh, supporting the msme uh, space uh, of course they need funds so debt funding and capital subsidy uh, for new businesses uh, then uh, of course make their uh, business model more uh, uh, sustainable and of course uh, make them grow and uh, uh, of course we need to recognize the achievers and then uh, of course international collaboration joint ventures uh, everywhere in all this space uh, i think we can play a major role so uh, i will restrict myself from saying much on opportunities part but uh, quickly i will give you uh, uh, an overview that okay where we can play a major role of course broad skill development the leadership and advancement is also another area uh, which is our forte so as company secretaries uh, we can uh, actually play a major role in that uh, the uh, enhancement of entrepreneurship itself uh, is something uh, uh, which uh, is imbibed in us as a professional uh, so we we need to work on it it and uh, of course uh, uh, you know uh, how to create flexibility and uh, work life balance uh, and uh, how to impact the local economies i think that is uh, uh, you know something we need to look at uh, and help in employment generation and help the government uh, in uh, the social sector as well uh, and of course uh, innovation and agility um, because uh, that's the key uh, so we are uh, uh, going to be a major uh, you know we can play a major role in uh, promoting uh, msme space and uh, i think uh, this is what i wanted to share with you uh, today uh, i will uh, take a stop here and uh, uh, will be happy to answer any of your questions uh, which you may have yeah yes sir a uh, few questions has been received from the participants uh two questions for you sir uh the question ask is can you highlight implication of fdi in msme and can this be a potential area for the professionals yeah of course uh, uh, you know in msme sector also uh, there are uh, uh, fdi norms are similar uh, and uh, uh, of course uh, we as professionals we can help uh, because all these msmes they have very little knowledge and also they don't have uh, the the uh, in large organizations they have cfos uh, they have uh, uh, you know uh, big teams working on uh, supporting them and uh, but here i think msmes they are uh, having lesser budget also they don't they can't go to big fours uh, for each and every advice i think uh, that is where we uh, as professionals can come in and help them uh, because there is a lot of fund which is coming even in our uh, startup sector uh, from us and uh, uh, europe uh, uh, although europe is having uh, uh, some funding crisis uh, going on uh, uh, at the moment so there is a uh, you must have heard a story about funding winter going on but uh, uh, that's a very temporary phase maybe uh, uh, but definitely in fti space there's a huge opportunity for us yes sir uh... one more question kindly highlight whether the practicing company secretary firm be registered as msme what are the short term and long term benefits for pcs entity 
I think this I leave it to uh, Ajay ji to answer. <laughs> okay, sir. Okay, sir. No issues. And uh, one more question for MSMEs: Do you think there is enough opportunities for CS? As there are many professional players, specifically in tier two and tier city uh, two cities. And also considering that many company secretaries have migrated to larger cities for uh, their core area of expertise. Yeah, so so that is where I think we have to do reverse migration. Uh, already, uh, there are people who are coming uh, from US to India uh, to start their uh, journey in India. Uh, I was talking to uh, uh, a very uh, uh, learned uh, person who deals with immigration business. He was telling me that uh, the immigration also has dropped down because people are finding that India story is uh, going to be a much bigger story, uh, and this is the time uh, that uh, you know we uh, all should focus on. Uh, okay, uh, helping uh, the people on the ground. So if you are moving uh, from a smaller town to a bigger town, uh, I think that migration will stop. If not reverse migration. That migration will stop because people will have opportunities locally. Uh, so uh, I think that opportunity is huge. And let me tell you, for company secretaries, uh, people are looking at us. Even government is looking at us uh, that we should contribute in this space and uh, help them uh, register so many MSMEs uh, which are still unregistered. Okay. Sir, uh, considering your experience and exposure with the corporate side of the profession, can you please highlight the opportunities uh, for company secretaries in employment under MSC? Yeah, one, uh, of course, uh, company secretaries are supposed to report, uh, uh, you know, and manage the uh, that uh, uh, MSME form and everything which we have to do. Uh, and of course, we have to deal with the MSMEs on regular basis. Uh, uh, we, we need to ensure that they are being paid on time. So uh, I think uh, more than uh, opportunity, it's a responsibility uh, towards MSME sector, uh, which uh, being a person uh, who is a KMP uh, in the company, you can actually ensure uh, that uh, they are paid on time and uh, you can actually contribute to their growth by ensuring that uh, there are no delays uh, in the payments. Uh, sir, one more uh, question. Can you please throw light on trades uh, uh, mechanism under MSME? Trades mechanism? Uh, trades mechanism. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, that is basically uh, how you are going to, uh, you know, expand your horizon uh, in the uh, overall uh, space. So, Government of India has come out with... Uh, uh, certain very structured, uh, uh, you know, things for MSME. And uh, uh, so once you register as a MSME, you are uh, uh, offered those uh, uh, assistances and uh, you are actually uh, supported, uh, as I mentioned about uh, the CGTMS and other schemes also. Uh, so uh, uh, government is trying to create an ecosystem where MSMEs are uh, you know, uh, second to none, and they become our future uh, uh, big, large corporate houses for India. So that is where I think all these uh, schemes are coming in to support them. Yeah. Uh, Gurg, sir, if you want, you can uh, also speak on any of the questions. Request you to please uh, throw light. Yes, thank you. The first question was in relation to the PCS and PCS firm registering as MSME? Answer is yes. That we are eligible to register as MSME under the category of service sector. Second question related to trades. Basically, this is the trade receivable discounting system. And MSMEs usually do not get funds on time. That means data realization is late. And because data realization is late to so them, whether they have the option for bill discounting, answer is yes. And now this ecosystem is known as TRADES, T-R-E-D-S, Trade Receivable E-Discounting Scheme, where three platforms have been approved and regulated by Reserve Bank of India. 
And on these three platforms, one is Invoice Mart, another one is RxIL, and the third one is there. So then on these three platforms, it is mandatory for all companies having the turnover of more than 500 crores to register. Banks and NBFCs are there as the third stakeholder. And MSMEs are also encouraged to register on the portals for discounting of the bills. That is there. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Sir, one more question. Last question uh, before we hand over to Ashish Ji Karudia for vote of thanks for the first session, technical session. Sir, if an entity is starting a year as a micro entity and in between the year, if it becomes a small uh, entity, let's say in August or September, then uh, how can we uh, avail the privileges given to small entity from banks and other financial institutions uh, in between that year? Ajay ji, your call. Yes. Pavan ji, see, actually now what has become, now the categorization has become dynamic. And this categorization is based on the balance sheet of the entity. And you see naturally what happens that 31st March balance sheet is ready by August or September or something like that. Sometimes in July or sometimes in June. Then what happens that this migration may be on the basis of two criteria. One criteria is turnover, another criteria is investment in plant and machinery. And, if, and a company may move upward, that means from micro to small, small to medium, or may move downward from medium to small or from small to micro. In all these situations, as far as benefits are concerned, the benefits are available on the basis of this dynamic system. For example, CGT MSC. CGT MSC is not available for medium category. This is available only for micro and small category, sir. Yeah. Correct, correct, correct. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Raju, sir. Uh, I request you to please uh, uh, be present till the end, yeah, sure. uh, if, sure. if your time permits. I request uh, Ashiji Karodia. Okay, uh, Asiji has uh, messaged me that uh, uh, conclusion would be at the same time for the both the sessions. So I request Rajiv sir to please be with us till yeah. the end of uh, the session. So I now request uh, Ajay Garg sir to please take over and uh, enlighten us with uh, his thoughts on the MSME. Yes, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And then, thank you, Rajiv ji, for setting the tone. And I will be straight away talking about how to enrich the pockets of the company secretary. Yeah, yeah. And see, the small city company secretaries as well as the mega city company secretaries, they all can be enriched with this. Practice in the segment of this one. Okay. Let us let us start with this small story. Yes, the story is related to King of Udupi and Lord Krishna. Basically, King of Udupi also visited Kurukshetra at the time of Mahabharat war, but he was confused. And he thought that in between the battle of the bars, wars between the brothers, I don't want to fight. And he went to the camp of the Krishna and told that I want to be in the battlefield, but I don't want to fight the war. Give me some assignment. And Lord Krishna gave him assignment that every day you will run the common kitchen. And in this common kitchen, Korvas and Pandvas, both the armies used to come and used to have the food. But see the beauty, on all the 18 days, there was zero wastage. Means no wastage. And the mantra for MSME success is zero scrap. So how it happened, why it happened, we will discuss at the end of the session. Let us, let us talk about that what was there before MSME Development Act 2006. See, this act came in 2006. And all the professionals of my age group, they know that prior to 2006, there was SSI Undertaking Act 1993. In SSI, the word was small scale. That means in 1993 in India, the differentiation between small scale and large scale started. And in 1993, 
the only the industry was there as for a segmentation of large scale and small scale was concerned. In 2006, what changed? Number one, that small scale was further trifurcated. Trifurcated means into three categories. It was subdivided into three categories, micro, small, and medium. What else changed? That the word industry got replaced with the word enterprise means this was the time when service sector was also given the recognition for the micro, small and medium sector. And then the word undertaking was replaced with the word development. That means government was focused now, separate department was created, later on separate ministry was created. And that way this MSME Development Act 2006 became active. Now see, let us talk straight away about the first opportunity. The first opportunity is in the form of Udyam registration. Rajiv ji was talking and he was telling that as of now, there are only 1 crore 73 lakh or something registrations under the MSME category. Means I am telling you, sir, on the basis of experience of my Mandali and of my city, that 75% of the MSMEs do not have even Udyam registration. And one more beauty for the youngsters who are attending this program. Pavanji, this today's program is being attended by more than 8,200 professionals. I want to tell. Sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And see, this Udyam registration, as one question was there, whether PCS and PCS firms are eligible for this Udyam registration. So then you can see that whether even we are not fully aware, then how MSMEs will become aware. 75% of the MSMEs are still out of this ambit of the MSME because they don't have even, they don't even have registered over here. And another beauty that trade has been included for limited purpose in the year 2021. 2021, see, if we see the whole spectrum, manufacturing sector is there, service sector is there, third sector is trade sector. And trade sector in 2021 notification was there and under this notification now, trade units can also register and can apply for Udyam registration. So now see Pavanji, that means very big opportunity is there and this can be beginning of the entry into MSME for any young or seasoned professional by way of sourcing the Udyam registrations for the trading units in his PCS basket. In PCS basket, if you have the trading firms, then those trading firms, if find, try, find out and you will realize that they don't have Udyam registration. Now they are eligible for Udyam registration under the category service. Third trade category has not yet been created. Okay, Pavanji, let us talk about the institutional framework because this institutional framework is very strong. And this institutional framework, first of all, Ministry of MSME, that is separate. And now most of the state governments also have a state or deputy minister and MSME ministry is separate almost in all states now. And this has happened in the last five years. Then there is one dedicated development commissioner. He is not involved in administrative work. He entirely focuses on the development of MSME. Therefore, the name of the office is DC MSME. And this office is attached to Ministry of MSME. Sidvi, everybody knows Pobanji. But FVCL, the seasoned professional like Pobanji, like Rajiv ji, like Sandeep ji, and all of us need to do one assignment with SVCL. That is Sidby Venture Capital Limited. See, otherwise also, Pavanji company secretaries are known to arrange the equity. And chartered accountants are known to arrange the debts. Our expertise is in equity more and their expertise is in debt more. That means Sidby is, if Sidby is, if I am putting this prefix, if Sidby is for chartered accountant, then SVCL is for company secretaries. And one assignment in a year and you will just jump with the joy because see the venture capital funding is not easy thing, number one thing. 
नंबर टू थिंग दैट वेंचर कैपिटल असाइनमेंट टेक्स एट मंथ सर सिक्स टू एट मंथ लगता है सर पैसा आने में मनी हैपन्स आफ्टर सिक्स टू एट मंथ फ्रॉम दी डे वेन यू स्टार्ट डूइंग दी वर्क ऑन दिस असाइनमेंट बट स्टिल इट मेक सेंस इफ यू टेक दी वेंचर फंड फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट सोर्स then fourth is nsic national small industries corporation this nsic earlier the name was national small industry corporation because now this industry has been replaced with entrepreneurship therefore national small industries corporation now has become nsic limited and this nsic limited also have this one wholly owned subsidiary one child and this child is known as nsic venture capital fund limited pavan ji and see in 2020 july finance minister announced that 10000 crores of fund of fund will be created for the healthy msme and where that fund has gone that fund has come in nsic said we didn't get it state bank of india which we were expecting didn't get it and these 10000 crore rupees by way of now this through the process now nsic has created wholly owned subsidiary nsic venture capital fund limited 10000 crores of government of india has been transferred into nvcfl and nvcfl is the mother fund means nvcfl is not going to disburse the equity funding to the msm is from this fund but they will give the matching fund to the down the line daughter funds and i want to tell that more than 40 daughter funds have already signed agreement with nbcfl and all these daughter funds are sector specific and my advice to all the seasoned professionals company secretaries who have practice of more than 5 years that just find out three daughter funds daughter funds and find out two three good healthy msmes in your practice basket try this will be the first year 23 24 one month has already gone where the disbursement will start almost from 75% of these daughter funds will you be one who will do at least one assignment in first year whether your client who is having healthy msme he will be enriched with the venture fund from nvcfl this is the question for each one of us whether company secretaries can take the lead my impression is company secretaries are fully fit and fully equipped with the knowledge and the ambition and the capabilities to handle the venture funding assignment now let us talk about this kvic kvic is khadi and village industries commission and this is nodal agency for one of the very important program of government of india sir that program is pm edp prime minister employment generation program or guarantee program basically this name itself is a misnomer this is prime minister entrepreneurship generation program but this is named as employment generation because when one become entrepreneur then at least he generate employment for two three four persons the even the smallest entrepreneur so therefore this scheme is known as pm egp and kvic is the nodal agency for this pm egp scheme nsic is nodal agency for number of initiatives of ministry of msme for example uh, you might have heard about sprs sprs is single point registration scheme that means if msme in your data wants to supply to public sector undertakings that also central public sector undertakings then this can do so without paying the tender fees this can do so without paying the em earnest money how this can happen by way of registering under sprs then sir there are msme development institutes what these msme development institutes do they do free programs at the cost of government of india they create awareness about various topics and in your city in hand holding with one of the msme chamber you can conduct this program 
choir board choir board is there under this umbrella and they specifically and particularly take care of the specific industry tea board choir board and see forget iit forget iim now times have changed this is the time for iie indian institute of entrepreneurship and pavanji you can you can float this question for the participants where is the head office of indian institute of entrepreneurship and allow them to google it let them find out that yes this ecosystem is there in four corners of india we have four institutes apex institutes which promote the entrepreneurship under lean model and under this lean model what do they do if suppose say in your client basket there are clients from education sector even for their evening empty rooms you can and you can facilitate agreement with them and under this agreement even they can start these msme short short courses for enrichment of msme and also for the generation of the entrepreneurship in the form of entrepreneurship development program or entrepreneurship skill development program or whatever you call it iie is situated in guwahati mdirri mahatma gandhi institute for rural industry this is situated in ahmedabad nimsme nimsme is situated in hyderabad national institute for micro small and medium enterprises and then there is nisbad nisbad is under ministry of entrepreneurship and skill development and this is situated in the city of rajiv bazar ji noida sir so then these four institutes nisbad in north india iie in eastern part of india not in calcutta but in guwahati mgirri not in bombay but in ahmedabad nimsme not in chennai but in hyderabad so that is the system and then state msmes and district industry centers and recently what has happened pavan ji that district industry centers the name has changed because this was this name was giving the misnomer that perhaps these centers caters only to the industry therefore entrepreneurs were not looking over there so now this name has changed and this name now has become diec district industries and entrepreneurship center in many of the states in north india and as rajiv ji was talking about msme technology centers so certain centers about 68 centers are already working all across india and there is ambitious target to take this figure to 1000 let us now talk about the second opportunity where where our company secretaries can straight away start the practice and can make money this scheme has been revamped very recently sir 1st june 2022 this is scheme as rajiv bhai was talking this is prime minister employment guarantee program and what has changed in this scheme that for manufacturing sector the limit has been increased from 25 lakh to 50 lakh and for service sector the limit has been increased from 10 lakh to 20 lakh and what is the attraction of the scheme the attraction of the scheme is that there is subsidy component subsidy subsidy is the best funding why this is best funding because neither one has to pay interest nor one has to return the money therefore this is considered as the best funding subsidy is considered as best funding and subsidy is there and pavan ji i want to tell one more thing here there was one interesting question whether pcs and pcs firms are eligible for उद्यम रजिस्ट्रेशन और नॉट तो आई वॉन्ट टू शेयर माई पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस आई रजिस्टर्ड माई फर्म इन टू थाउजेंड एट एंड इन टू थाउजेंड इलेवन अंडर मार्केट असिस्टेंस स्कीम आई वेंट टू यूएसए इन दी बिजनेस डेलीगेशन ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड वेयर माई ओवरऑल एक्सपेंस ऑफ यूएस वॉज सब्सिडाइज टू दी एक्सटेंट ऑफ सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट because others were not aware therefore ajay gar got this benefit and then second time i got this benefit in 2015 where again 
my name was there in the business delegation msme business delegation of government of india See, there were three benefits three direct benefits of these seven days tours number 1 that this was subsidized that means at the cost of goa i visited the usa and enjoyed second thing that in first batch there were 29 entrepreneurs i was the only one who was the professional all others were the core industries people second time there were 36 this time again i was the only professional three service sector entrepreneurs and rest 32 manufacturing sector entrepreneurs and there in usa because i was the professional i was ready with the government of india schemes i got opportunities in first business delegation that means in 2011 and in 2015 i got three opportunities to represent the ppts means to sensitize the americans about the schemes of government of india see such a big honor where where you are the part of the business delegation where government of india is subsidizing your tour where you are being received by the uh, embassy of india where you get the opportunity to speak where you are representing the nation where you are getting connected with the entrepreneurs also so now you can see the multiple benefits which might have occurred to my practice because of these exposures anyway let us come back to pm egp and in pm egp see in subsidy i have mentioned 15% 25% then 25% and 35% this divide is on the basis of rural and urban in rural sector for general category 15% in urban sector and in rural sector this is 25% whereas <clears throat> for the reserve category in urban sector 25% and in rural sector 35% that is the subsidy now see if you take the loan of 50 lakh rupees then what is the subsidy quantum in urban area the subsidy quantum in urban area is 7 and 1/2 lakh rupees and this 7 and 1/2 lakh rupees takes care of the waiting period where your company breaks even and turns into profit that takes care of it contribution by the entrepreneurs required is 10% in urban area and 5% in rural area that is minimum contribution required but see sir there are there is one hurdle also that hurdle is that for getting the benefit of pm egp hybrid security is required hybrid security means that security to the extent of 25% of the loan quantum is to be given by the entrepreneur therefore if the your prospective entrepreneur do not have the security then never recommend pm egp pm egp can be recommended only when say the loan amount is 40 lakh rupees and your client is in a position to give the security against 10 lakh rupees of loan because only 30 lakh rupees out of that means 70 to the extent of will be covered under the guarantee scheme of government of india then 15 days edp is mandatory entrepreneurship development program attendance and certificate of 15 days edp is mandatory and see the eligibility 8 plus 18 that means even 8th pass can be beneficiary of pm egp scheme and the minimum age is 18 years for taking benefit of this scheme and my colleagues my professional colleagues company secretaries who are attending this program i will encourage them to visit this portal kvconline.gov.in because this scheme has been revamped on 1st june 2022 in maharashtra pavan ji maharashtra has better scheme as far as this pm egp is concerned so then cm egp there we call it cm egp most of the states have parallel scheme <coughs> parallel to pm egp and this is known as cm egp scheme but here we will be focusing only on the these schemes here and let us now talk about one more scheme which is wonderful schemes sir and this scheme is suitable when your client does not have any security at all 
if your prospective entrepreneurial client do not have any security, we always handhold him for mudra loan scheme. We never suggest PMEGB because he is not having the security. Why he is not having security? He may have the house, but that house may not have the approved map. That means may not be in the approved area, may be in the unauthorized area or may be in the village. That means whatever security he has, even if his parents are ready to give it as a security, that security will not be accepted by the banking system. Therefore, to such prospective entrepreneurs, we always recommend mudra loan, sir. Because in mudra loan, there is no collateral security required. And if you will go on the mudra portal, then you will find that lakhs of crores of rupees have been distributed all across India. Question is that when we will be talking next year, whether the attendees who are there, whether they will do one such loan. <clears throat> I want to share the secret here, sir. Secret of the trade. Secret of the trade is usually professionals complain that mudra loan do not happen and bank manager with one excuse or other will turn you back. Number one, that you need to develop a small project report. If you have never developed a project report, go on KVIC portal. On KVIC portal, you will get thousands of reports, which real life reports, which are available free of cost. One source I have told you, another, told, another source is Sidvi. On Sidbi portal also, hundreds of project reports are available at free of cost. You can just go there, download it, make the changes, make the suitable changes, and your project report is ready. Now, processing fees is well over here. Age, entry age can be 18 years and maximum up to 65 years. That means the impression that Mudra loan is only for the youngster. This is wrong impression. Repayment term is five years. Collateral security is not required. Collateral security not required is the best attraction for this. And Pavanji, the secret. Secret is that in our office, we used to collect two, three, five files, whatever are there. And whenever Mudra Loan Mela is there, we submit the files during Mudra Loan Mela. Because every bank branch is duty bound to convene one mudra loan mela in a year. That means if your city have 25 banks, then you your city will have 25 mudra loan mela during the year. Now, can your client and you be ready with the documents? Can you submit these documents during mudra loan mela? Because there the focus of the branch is to achieve the target. Because their focus is to achieve the targets, if your documents are impeccable, then your disbursement will happen within 15 days, sir. This is the secret. Second secret is that if your client is in hurry, apply on the Mudra portal. <clears throat> this Mudra portal is managed by basically Mudra is nothing, sir. This is wholly owned subsidiary of Sidvi. Micro Units Development and Regulation Agency. Mudra and this Mudra is wholly owned subsidiary of Sidbi. This have a separate portal and on this separate portal there is inter. This is this portal is interface portal as Rajivji was talking about fifty nine minutes portal. So similarly this is interface portal where banks are also there where micro units can upload their documents and in principle approval or banks they may even suggest the banks where from they want to take this benefit. And this mudra loan also do not involve the DIC office. DIC office are not involved. That means DC of the district is not involved. That means this happens faster than PMEGP. PMEGP is patience game. That takes four months. Mudra loan, as soon as loan mela is there in your city and you are aware, submit your file and get approved, get disbursement and enjoy. Now let us talk about PM EGP Accelerator Scheme. Accelerator Scheme is one of the wonderful things. Why this is wonderful? This is wonderful because of the reason that if your business is successful, either under PM EGP or under Mudra Loan, 
then your unit that means unit of your client is eligible for the second loan and this time this loan can be up to 1 crore rupees 1 crore rupees means earlier say under mudra loan 10 lakh rupees loan has been taken now your company is 3 years old and your client wants the additional loan to fuel the further growth that means rest 90 lakh rupees loan can happen to him under pm egp accelerator scheme for availing the benefit of this accelerator scheme Three years profit track record is the only condition and last three years ITR or CA certificate. ITR, why ITR? Because profit is to be supported by ITR. But there may be a situation where business was started under proprietorship and in proprietorship there may be a situation where profit was there but the profit was less than the taxable limit in the hands of the individual means profit track record is there but ITR is not there then is there any solution yes solution is there and this solution is in the form of CA certificate this is your PM EGP scheme I will advise the youngsters whose practice is less than three years as of now that enter in the financial world with the baby steps Take the step so that at least one mudra loan and one PM EGP in the next year, that means this financial year 23-24 happens from your small, medium or large office. And that way what will happen that you will feel the joy of doing something which you have not yet done. Now, let us talk about this CGT MSC. And I was telling that the CGT MSC scheme is one of the wonderful schemes. How it is wonderful? Number one, this scheme caters only to micro and small enterprises. This scheme is also a hybrid scheme. That means some of the security is to be given by the entrepreneur. 100% of the coverage will not happen under this CGT MSC fund. And how much coverage is there? Coverage is from 75% to 85%. But for retail traders, this coverage of the guarantee is restricted up to 50%. And very recently, see what has happened. Very recently, that, that means only last week, this 2 crore limit has now been increased to 5 crores last week only that means in the month of april only the limit for cgt msc which was earlier 2 crores now has been increased to 5 crores for manufacturing and service sector and for retail trade the limit has been increased to 1 crore currently commission is payable and to get the benefit of this cgt msc scheme as a professional you need to visit cgtmsc.in that is the portal, the official <coughs> government portal. And on this government portal, you will find this key. <coughs> Let us talk about, see, because MSME has multiple verticals. One of the vertical is funding. We have covered some of the funding schemes over there. Another vertical is quality. And for this quality, the scheme which is there by government of India, that is zero effect, zero defect. Z scheme. In brief, this has become Z scheme. And this Z scheme is basically the quality certification, which is India-centric certification. That means ISO challenges are not there. And this Z certification is possible. Zero defect, everybody understands. But zero defect, zero effect, you need to understand. And zero effect means there is no adverse effect on the environment. And zero defect means that there is no deficiency in the product which has been produced or the service which has been delivered or to be delivered. <laughs> Earlier, there were five categories in this. Z certification, this has also been revamped after Corona. And now there are three categories only. One is 
bronze, another one is silver, and third one is gold. These three categories are there under Z certification scheme. Earlier physical interventions were there in this certification scheme, but now these physical interventions have been reduced. And for MSME sector, there is a subsidy component for this Z certification. First of all, joining reward that as soon as the pledge will be taken by MSME, that they will join this Z certification, 10,000 rupees will be transferred into their account. Subsidy component, subsidy component is 80%, 60% and 50%. This is the subsidy component for the various categories. Add-on subsidy, this add-on subsidy to the extent of 10% is applicable for three. Number one, gender-wise women, category-wise SC and ST, and geography-wise northeastern region of India. Add-on subsidy 5% for clusters. That means the fees which is payable for Z certification, the maximum subsidy can be up to 95%. Gap analysis and handholding support that is in addition to initial certification. For gap analysis and handholding support, there is additional subsidy. Financial assistance up to 75% of the total cost with maximum 50,000 of the subsidy. So that is also there. For this MSME Z certification, therefore, if your MSME client is struggling and his, his clientele, MSME's clientele is asking for the certification or he has to export, then always advise your client to go for this Z certification scheme. Z certification scheme, basically this is the scheme of government of India. The scheme is being implemented by Quality Council of India. There are accredited training providers, there are accredited consultant and accredited agency for assessment and rating. And all professionals are eligible to become the, even the assessor or the consultant or the awareness creator. That is possible for that one need to visit the portal of Qualities Council of India. Industry awareness programs, assessment, anyway, this is the basically the further detail which presently we do not require in this session. JED pledge, the validity period of JED pledge is one year. One year means within one year the certification formalities must be completed. And this now because of the Corona, what has happened, Quality Council of India has completely revamped. Now the human intervention in this JET certification is to the extent of minimum because desktop things are there and client can complete the requirement at his level. But usually because MSMEs do not have that type of staff, therefore what happens that they outsource even this certification compliance work to firms like my firm. So then in your city, you can also get this work if you are fully aware of the system of this JET certification. This is not a rocket science. This is simple. And every company secretary is fully capable to handle such assignments from the table. Here is Pavanji, here is that PREETS platform because here also there is a scope of the consultancy for even onboarding one of the MSME, you get 5,000 rupees as the consultation fees. But 5,000 is not fixed, you may charge more, you may charge less. This is trade receivable discounting system platform. Three platforms are approved by Reserve Bank of India. One is RXIL.in, second one is M1 Exchange, third one is Invoice Smart. And as I told that 500 crores turnover companies, this is mandatory that they must onboard at least one platform. For MSMEs, this is recommendatory. All the banks and NBFCs are there on this bill discounting system. And see the beauty of this bill discounting system that when you discount the bill, this is nowhere reflected in your balance sheet. That means debt equity ratio of your client is not disturbed by discounting of the bills. This is not reflected as debt. 
what happens that in place of the debtor sundry debtors the name of the banker will enter over there that is the only scenario that means debt equity ratio is not disturbed pavanji you are saying something okay fine msme mart.com msme mart is basically one of the initiative of government of india where the nodal agency is nsic limited basic membership is free gold membership is there sc and st gold membership 80% discount is there and this msme mart facilitate not only the business but it also facilitate msme loans it also facilitate international business there is gem portal gem portal facilitation also brings business to the professionals government e marketplace what is the name of this gem portal full name is government e marketplace this is managed by dgs and d directorate general of supplies and dispatches and 9th august 2016 this was started initially inr 25000 rupees up to direct purchase were there and others up to 5 lakh rupees limited tender l1 tender purchase possible without any tender and then <clears throat> now see how much business is happening on this gem portal whether your client has onboarded under your guidance when you onboard your client there is a suggestion and this suggestion is that do not leave your client just with the onboarding but hand all your client for a period of one year at least facilitate three sales from gem portal on behalf of your client then create inbuilt capacities in his in house department train one of his person and i'm telling you he will become your brand ambassador and instead of he being your client he will bring three more clients to you it helps when you make him brand ambassador then it helps and this creates a ecosystem where you hand hold not only for the registration you make money for registration but you get further money when you continue to place information continue to participate in tender still your client gets 1 2 3 three tenders and three orders and three sales are executed from there till that time hand hold your client now sir let us talk about further equity infusion because funds infusion in the form of loan we have talked in the form of cgt msc we have talked in the form of the mudra we have talked in the form of pm edp only three small schemes i have told now this is the time for equity infusion through fund of funds and i will advise because work is starting only in this year 23 24 the name of the portal is www.nvcfl.co.in this has been named as sri fund self reliant india fund and this is for traditional healthy msme see what happens that it driven msme is ai and all these iot they get lot of equity attracted but the traditional healthy msme may not get the equity instantly <clears throat> and this model 10000 crores have been transferred by government of india this model is in the 2080 model that means daughter funds has to arrange 80 rupees and 20 rupees will be given from this fund that way this fund will become a fund of 50 crores because minimum inr 25 crores that is provided in the model that and then additional 5 crores that means if fund daughter fund is worth 25 crores then 20 crores fund to be arranged by the daughter fund and 5 crores will be given from this nsic venture capital fund limited 20 is the old figure now the daughter funds which have already entered into agreement with nvcfl they are more than 40 list of the empaneled daughter funds are is available on the portal and you can find out the venture fund which is near to your city wherever you are so that you can do something over there now let us talk about esdp and other trainings 
this has been seen that many company secretaries they are active like me in the partially in the academic world also so here i am telling you that in ministry of msme also there are number of schemes where you can become a conduit and rightfully and as a speaker as a organizer you can also make money the portal name which is nowadays active is champion.gov.in industry motivation campaign this is their industrial motivation campaign this campaign is of one or two days entrepreneurship awareness camp awareness program that is there third is esdp that is entrepreneurship skill development program fourth is management development programs and fifth one is vocational and educational training by tr and tdcs what is this tr and tdc technology centers technology development centers and tie up with nisbad or iie or whatever so here are some ideas that if because see when we are in practice then one two educational institutions are always in the basket of the practitioner if you have educational institutions you can arrange a tie up with either nisbad or iii or M mi msme national institute or with mgirr then what will happen that their evening classrooms which are totally empty they will be able to make some money by way of providing this esdp trainings and mdp trainings industrial motivation campaign these industrial motivation campaigns are basically for the entrepreneurs who are already into business and you can how you can arrange this training of one two days where you will decide the speakers where you will enter into the tie up go on the portal of msme development institute find out one of the institute in nearby to your place and then find out one of the chamber of commerce and industry and in the and by way of matching these two you can invite that msme development institute to conduct this industrial motivation campaign what is this entrepreneurship awareness program this entrepreneurship awareness program is for the graduates engineers post graduates and this can be conducted this one day training can one day workshop can be conducted in any of the educational institution where you are paid for organizing such program or to be speaker in that program so that way particularly this has been seen that many female company secretaries they are into this academic world so this particular slide is to take care of the sentiments of the female company secretaries particularly who are active in the field of the academics now see nsic i will tell about two more schemes sir and then we'll leave the time for the question answers sprs is very good scheme sir where we make money as a practicing professional tender fees waiver this happens with sprs emd waiver also happens is for tendering opportunity to match l1 bidder if there is no if even if msme is not l1 they are given the opportunity to match l1 bidder in terms of money in terms of the quality third party audit is required for single point registration scheme nsic is the nodal agency for that and client do not have capability for this third party audit therefore he engages you to complete to get this audit successfully completed you are needed as hand holder during the audit because this audit is process audit this is not the finance audit because this is not finance audit and this is process audit if you are well aware of your client then you can easily handle this audit as a service provider as a professional so then sir this is the last scheme before we start the question answer msme samadhan and every state by this time has this msc facilitation council you know if the case is to be filed for recovery then percentage in percentage the money is to be deposited in civil courts here this percentage is not required the amount varies from 2000 to 4000 three times bank interest rate is provided over there that means faster recovery is here very less fees because in most of the states fees vary from 2000 to 4000 rupees 
one time lawyer not mandatory that means practicing company secretary can also represent the client in these in this system and that aura of the court is not there but committee is there and that committee go for the processing in civil courts we are taking now about 8 years for settlement of any civil matter whereas in these facilitation councils the time taken is usually 2 years and in 2 years what happens that the in 75% of the cases the money is recovered the bad money and this is our best scheme, the last scheme for today's session. This scheme is also by Government of India, Exhibition Subsidy. Rajiv Bhai talked about Exhibition Subsidy in his deliberation. And now what is what has changed? That instead of one, two exhibitions are allowed on YOY basis. That means in one year, two exhibitions, subsidy is possible. One is domestic exhibition, another one is international exhibition. International means maybe in Germany, maybe in USA, maybe Auto Mechanica, maybe any of the any of the exhibition, any of the exhibition where which is empaneled with government of India. This is not upfront subsidy, this is reimbursement subsidy, but up to 85% is possible. For micro sector, there is 75%. For a special category, 10% additional subsidy is there. And this subsidy is sir not only for the traveling but also for payment of the, the exhibit area and for transportation and transportation back of the goods to be displayed during the survey. And but remember there are formalities to be complied pre-exhibition and post-exhibition and again NSIC is the nodal agency for this exhibition subsidy list of approved international exhibitions that is available on NSIC portal. But if your client wants to participate in exhibition which is not there in the list, then with very less formalities, this exhibition can also be included in the list of this approved international exhibitions. And we have successfully included two more exhibitions in this category of the international exhibitions. So that way, sir, what happens? Now we are reaching again to the story. And see, sir, when 18th day of the war was over, then Yudhishthir was noticing this, that in the kitchen of the king of Udupi, there is no vestige. He was amazed that how king of Udupi became aware that how many soldiers will get killed because his food was just sufficient to feed the remaining soldiers. So then he asked Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna said, okay, let us go to King Udubi and let us ask him directly what is the secret and how there was no wastage at all. Then King Udubi revealed the secret when he was asked. He told that Lord Krishna, you loved the peanuts and at the end of the dinner, I always offered you the peanuts to be eaten after the food. And number of peanuts you ate, I could realize that next day these many thousand of soldiers will not be there in the battlefield. And on the basis of that, I did my calculations and prepared my kitchen for the next day. And that was the secret that because even now the Odupi restaurants have this blessing of Lord Krishna. He was blessed then by Lord Krishna that in food business, your generations will never make losses. But this is mythological story. I even do not know about this, that whether this story is and how much successful is this story, sir. So therefore, here I am stopping sharing of my PPT and so that we can go for the questions, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the very nice coverage. Uh, most of the questions which were uh, raised during your session uh, have been uh, answered by you during your uh, this thing, uh, presentation itself. But a uh, few small questions which uh, are yet to be answered, which were not covered in the uh, presentation are, uh, 
uh, is the MSME compliance applicable on branch office of a foreign company? Let's say a foreign company is there and it is a branch office in India and not a subsidiary company. So only branch office, whether... Yeah, this question is passed over to Rajiv Bajaj. Yeah, basically, uh, you know, there, there are different uh, norms for uh, the uh, branch office uh, by RBI. So branch offices of international firms are governed by those regulations. Uh, so uh, I think... Uh, and they are not, uh, they will not be covered yes. under this MSME. Yeah. You are right, sir. I also have the same. Okay. Sir, uh, there is a, a train which is seen that uh, the entities which are non MSME entities are setting up MSME compliant uh, entities okay, to avail the benefit. So, uh, has this been taken? Uh, note of by the government because you are traveling with the government delegates. So, is there any thought process to take action on such practices or it is a legal via media, I would say, to uh, do this? As of now, no, sir. Okay. As of now, government of India, because see the world experience. In world, what happens? In India, just now, we have this limit of 250 crores. If you see the western world then msme they gave this msme even to the extent of 2000 crores so we are still as far as upper limit is concerned we are way behind even in taiwan the limit which is there in korea that is much much higher than the limits which are prescribed in our country and as of now because in many many times in ministry of msme i am representing the msmes as of now, there is no such move to restrict the benefit. Okay. Sir, if a supplier is uh, still registered under Udyo Aadhaar and has not uh, migrated to Udyam registration, so whether that supplier uh, would automatically cease to fall under MSME? See, Pavanji, this is very interesting phase. The MSME as far as obligations of another MSME or large unit. Whether this registration is there or not, this registration, whether this registration is as per the norms or not, if it is the MSME, then as far as the categorization in the balance sheet is there, this is to be categorized under MSME. Whether the valid registration is there or not, this is immaterial. One thing. Second thing that this time period for migration from Udyog to Udyam has been extended further because as of now, less than 50% of the MSMEs who were having this Udyog registration have done this migration from Udyog to Udyam. Okay, sir. Uh, just for the sake of clarity, uh, in my opinion, even though the MSMEs are not registered, they are still uh, can get the benefit of MSME if they are not registered. Correct, sir? Yes, sir. But only for the purpose of reflection in the balance sheet, sir. Otherwise, this is passport. Absolutely. Without, visa cannot happen without passport. Similarly, the subsidy benefits cannot happen unless and until valid Udyam registration is there, sir. Yes. <laughs> Very good example, sir. Visa and passport. Sir, uh, is it mandatory to file MSME returns with ROC? See, uh, we have seen many agreements between the companies and the vendors, wherein the payment terms are more than 45 days, 60 days, 90 days, kind of. So, if uh, those agreements has been entered, so whether it is uh, uh, compulsory to find uh, report those transactions in the MSME return, which says uh, or which we which is required uh, to report the transactions beyond forty five days. Yes, sir. Agreement, any agreement beyond the law, beyond the boundary of the law. Okay. okay. And last question, sir, before I hand it over to uh, Ashish. Yes, sir. Ashish. Ji. Uh, MSME is important contributor to the GDP. In light of this, uh, regulators uh, time and again launch various schemes. What would you suggest to keep 
updated on various changes sir because you have covered so many uh, uh, schemes so many uh, inputs so how you keep uh, abreast of these changes so if you can uh, uh, yes share your uh, trade secret, secret. So it would be yes, sir. really helpful for the participants secret is for all 8000 plus participants that it is 12,800 participants are more 12,800. Very, well. very nice, very nice, <laughs> sir. This is for all 12,800 that in your respective city become the member of one of the business member organizations, sir. If you are not become the member of BMO, when you become the member of the BMO, you get three benefits, sir. One benefit that you get 12 lunches or dinners in the august company of the entrepreneurs <laughs> cost is 5000 rupees why you why not per lunch Correct. second is second is that your practice progresses with the direct connect with your prospective client absolutely third is that at least once in a year you are invited to share your knowledge on that platform so these are this is the secret sir that when you are in the company of the entrepreneurs, that means you are member of the BMO in your respective city, then you get this benefit, sir, however small the city may be. Transporter association is everywhere. If any other association is not there, become the member of transporter association, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Uh, and on the top of it, I would like to add, uh, keep an eye on uh, the MSME uh, Ministries website and also the Udyam website. You'll, you'll get all the updates. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Raju, sir. Thank you, Ajay, sir and uh, Raju, sir. Uh, we have uh, with us uh, CS Ashish Karodia ji, my uh, council colleague. I request Ashish ji to take, please take this over. Uh, thank you, Pawan Bhai, Ajay, sir, Raju, sir. Uh, friends, I am glad that uh, whenever institute organize such sessions uh, that gives uh, opportunity to explore new avenues, we receive a great number of participation, uh, which always encourage us to enter to new subject for the members. Uh, I am thankful to our faculties for highlighting all major points on such important sector of our economy. Uh, friends, MSME is the growth engine of our economy and government of India is having development of MSME in its top uh, priority list. Uh, they are leaving no stone unturned to boost MSME sector and uh, give all the possible, possible protection to it. Uh, definitely, whenever government is keen to encourage any uh, sector of uh, economy, it uh, brings a lot of new avenues and opportunities for uh, professionals. Now it is uh, cross-border also as government has signed many MOUs with uh, uh, other countries for promoting uh, cooperation in the field of MSME in the broad areas of capacity building, joint action to improve investment, uh, partnership projects, uh, exhibitions and trade fairs, exchange of business uh, missions, exchange of information, etc. Uh, now, every state government is also working alongside uh, central government to promote uh, these sectors. Instead of uh, red tape, they are preparing great carpet, uh, carpet to invite more and more investment. Just imagine yourself, friends, uh, whenever a unit will come in any place of country, number of opportunity will be created for professional. Uh, since the ecosystem right from purchasing of land, uh, to commissioning of the project involves a number of steps. We can explore ourselves through, uh, through this ecosystem to help, uh, help to establish the manufacturing enterprises. Normally it is said that in metro cities has many opportunities are available, but uh, as far as the tier two, tier three cities are concerned, most of the people consider that uh, they are having list of a professional opportunity. But I believe that after looking to the importance of MSMEs in, in uh, Indian economy, where government are initiating various schemes, subsidies, financial assistance to such sectors, we can bridge the uh, gap among the government, banker, regulator and enterprises. Now we need to work uh, as a business uh, facilitator, uh, litigation facilitator and a uh, overall corporate governor. governor. Uh, we at the Institute are keen to regular organize, organize such webinar and programs from to time. 
we are thankful to cs sandeep kejriwal ji uh, chairman pcs committee icsi for initiating such wonderful session once again i am thankful to our today's speaker bajaj sir and ajay garg sir for enhancing our knowledge and explaining the role of cs in msme sectors thank you pawan bhai for being a great coordinator thank you all for your maximum participations and expecting the same in upcoming sessions thank you thank you ashish bhai we declare that today's uh, webinar is over thanks a lot thank you very much thank you everyone thank you thank you, thank you.